our dear viewers and listeners. We greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice. And be glad in it. Once again, we welcome you to today's Bible study. And we humbly request you to invite somebody to be a part of this transformational process. As we delve into the word of God and take in this word because this word is life and this word is transformative. So before we begin today's session, let's take a moment to pray and then read the word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. We welcome your grace, mm. your love, mm. your revelation, King of glory. Yes, Lord. Have your way in us, Heavenly Father. Yes, Amplify your word. Mm. Let it bring change, healing, revelation, mm. growth, mm. increase. Mm. Let it yield fruit in us yes, and through us mm. to the praise and glory of our Lord and Savior, mm. Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Our text today is in the book of Romans chapter 6 from verse 1 to verse 7. The scripture says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Spirit of the living God, use us in this moment to the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue on this developing subject of our sanctification. And this is the theme that runs through chapter 6. And we see it going all the way through chapter 7 up to chapter 8. So when we look at the word sanctification, and for our benefit, I will take you back to where we began to have it all in totality. So when we talk about sanctification, I told you that it goes back to a Greek word, hagiasmos. Hagiasmos is where we get the other words that 
a root of this word. So it is where we get the word hagios. Hagios means holy. And it is this where we get also the word hagion. Hagion means saint. Now all these three words come from the same root Greek word which means separate. Now for you to understand what separate means or the idea of hagiasmos is like to you taking a knife and having taken a knife, you get a fruit and you cut it into half. What happens when you do that? You have two pieces that are separated. One from the other. That is the idea of hagiasmos. So what it means is to be set apart. To be separated. Now this separation has two sides. There is the negative sense and there is the positive sense. Now the negative sense is what we are being separated from. So when you are separated, there is what you were separated from. And there is the second bit of what you were being separated to. So, let's look at what you were separated from. From the text, we discovered three things you are separated from. Number one, you were separated from sin. And being separated from sin, that means from ruling. Sin from ruling over you or governing over you. So sin no longer has power over you when you come to Jesus Christ. So the second thing is that you were set apart from the world, from the evil systems that govern our world and society. And the third respect is that you were set apart from the influences of the devil himself. Before that, you were a captive of darkness. But sanctification produces a break. So you are separated from the influence of the devil. You are no longer his captive. Now the positive aspect of this is that you were now separated or set apart unto the image of God. So you no longer have the image of the devil. In Christ Jesus, you pick on the image of God. The second thing that happens is that you are separated unto the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you function like the Lord Jesus Christ. And the third is that you were separated unto the purposes of the kingdom of God. So your passion or your mandate now is to fulfill the purposes of the kingdom. And this is abode in you. 
era kino kisobose kisoboke dwa munda mu by the holy spirit who has given to you o kuita moyo mutukuvu e yakuweba so the holy spirit is the catalyst ato moyo mutukuvu yaliye mabega wokole bintu bino of this sanctification process e mugdwa mitendera jine jo kwaula so we then also so that when we talk about sanctification we are referring to what god is doing in you tutegeza omulimo katonda gwali okola munda mu make you okufula like his son jesus christ ngo mwana we kristo yesu so it is what god is doing by his spirit in you chidi mwecho katonda chali mukola okuita moyo we ali munda mu we you to the image of jesus christ akubumbe muchifana nyi cha kristo yesu and let's not forget it is an internal work that is evidenced outside so having got that perception we then move on and so several observations regarding sanctification that we need to have at the back of our mind number 1 is the observation that if you come to Jesus Christ all the changes that we see in this text have already happened in you they are not progressively happening they have happened and the bible uses a past tense to help us understand this reality secondly what comes to mind is that everything we discover in this passage occurred in that moment of our faith placing our faith in Jesus Christ so that reality we became and everything so it's not some we became and some we did not everything became us that moment so the th- the third one is that our regeneration or our our conversion brought a radical transformation in our lives. So you are not panobitten. You became a new creation. So you inherited new life. And we shall see that in detail. But I want you to understand the whole concept of sanctification set apart neso kotegere we tuogenda kukwaulibwa tutege ogwo kutukuziba kitegeza okwaula and the fourth which is the big one icho kuna teche chinene is that the basis of all this si kwebasi nziro twaula is the fact that when you were separated ndi we wamalo kwaulibwa you were joined no malate no lyoko gatibwa to Christ Jesus and it is this union with Christ Jesus that becomes the foundation of this sanctification process and this is what Jesus himself preached about in John 14 verse 20 he clearly points out the two aspects of our joining with him so you are in Christ and Christ is in you so what that means is whatever is true to Christ or whatever is true of Christ becomes true of you so 
whatever he accomplished has become the reality in your life. Whatever he is to God, you are. Whatever he is to the devil, you become in that moment. So if he is a victor over the devil and he is, that is the reality of your life. You are a victor over the devil. No, not because you have the muscles. No, it is based on who he is. And you now being joined to him. So you have now picked his identity. And whatever he is, you are. Don't lose that fact. So as we develop this subject, under the question, what happened to you? What happened happened to you now that you have believed? What happened to you now that Christ is in your life? What happened to you now that Jesus is the Savior and the Lord of your life? And last week, we saw two very important realities. Number one is the fact that we died to the reign of sin. And that we find in verse 2 of chapter 6 where Paul poses this question and says how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it. And this is a statement of fact. This is an accomplished reality. What is the reality? The reality is that we died to sin. And we can no longer live in it. So every genuine believer in Jesus Christ died to the reign of sin in their life. Why? Because we saw that when sin reigned, it reigned in death. So having understood that, when we come to Jesus Christ, we now die to sin. So sin no longer has the hold of our lives. So we are no longer under that power of sin. We have been set free. Living in sin is to live for sin. So we no longer live for sin. As believers in Jesus Christ, we no longer are consumed with sin. Sin no longer has a grip over our lives. So we cannot habitually live a lifestyle of sin. Why? Because we have died to sin. The second reality is what we find in verse 3. And the Bible says, do you not know that as many of us as we are baptized into Christ Jesus, we are baptized into his death. And it is here that we pick the second reality. That we did not just die to sin, but we were baptized into Christ Jesus. And baptism here 
I will reiterate, is not the water baptism. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And this is the word baptism, which means immersion. So when we talk about immersion, we are not talking about getting in dry and coming out wet. That is not what is implied here. Baptizo is a word that comes from the merchants or the people that dealt in cloth. And they would use it for the dying process. Whereby they would get a color or a dye and put it in a solution and get a cloth and dip it in the solution. And the cloth now picks on the color of the solution. So if the solution was red because of the dye, then the cloth now becomes red. So it is no longer referred to by its former color. It now picks on the color of the dye in which it was dipped. So if it was a red solution, from that moment onwards, it is referred to as a red cloth. Everywhere you go with it, it is referred to as a red cloth because it was dipped in a red dye. So, even in the same vein, when we talk about us having been baptized into Christ Jesus, that baptism causes everyone who is baptized in him to pick on a new identity. So from that moment onwards, you identify with Christ. You have put on Christ. Your life is hid in Christ. And the Bible uses so many allegories to try and bring home this point. To help us understand that at that point in time you have been placed in Christ Jesus. And Paul asks a question, do you not know. Because this is common knowledge. This was common knowledge at that time. And he wants you to understand that this happened. So, to be baptized places you in close union with Jesus Christ. So, it happens at that point of regeneration. And it is this baptism that moves you from the lineage of Adam and places you in the lineage of Jesus Christ. So you have now been made one with Jesus Christ. And may I add that this is the work of grace. So this union with Jesus Christ is what flows through the pages of the New Testament. And the Bible goes on to tell us that we were chosen in Christ. So our choosing is not of our own. It is us in Christ Jesus. Even our predestination 
na magenda gafya gate katika kwa Christ Jesus gali mu Kristo Yesu our redemption okugulibwa kwa is in Christ Jesus kuli mu Kristo Yesu our forgiveness okusonyiwa kwa bibi is in Christ Jesus kuli mu Kristo Yesu our being made alive okufulibwa abalamu is in Christ Jesus kuli mu Kristo Yesu our enthronement okutuzi okufutuzwa ku nabulona in Christ Jesus so this is the reality of who we have become and this applies to every believer in Jesus Christ. So when you are joined to Christ, whatever Christ possesses, you possess. And that is something we need to understand. In another place, Paul puts it to us. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 3. He explains to us that now our life is hidden in Christ. And in verse 4 he explains further and says and Christ who is our life. So your life is hidden in Christ. And Christ now becomes your life. So you are in him. And he's in you. Don't forget that fact. That is the second reality. The third reality is what we unveil to you today. That you are not only baptized in Christ Jesus. But you were baptized into Jesus Christ's death. So our union in Christ is a union into his death. So this is how it works. And when you when Jesus Christ died on the cross, we died with him. So our baptism into his death implies that his death becomes our death. That is to say we died to our old self once and for all. So this baptism into death implies that you died to the life that you once lived. So the old person who did ABCD who was an enemy of God died at that moment. The scriptures further amplifies this. In verse 5 of chapter 6, he says we have been united with him in the likeness of his death. And verse 6 explains that our old self was crucified with him. Basically what it means is that when Christ died, he died for our sins. And we died with him. So we died to our sins. So why he died for our sins? We, didn't, we did not die for our sins. He did that bit. He was sinless and he took on our sins. So he died for our sins. So when we died with him, we died to our sins. And I want you to understand that fact. That is why Paul comes back to us. In the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 16, and this is what he says. 
He says, do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as lives for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death, all of obedience resulting in righteousness. Righteousness, that is dikayosune, credited with God's glory. So obedience brings credit of God's righteousness. On the other hand, when you are a slave of sin, it results into death. So everyone began on the other side. But on the cross, Jesus died. And this was a real death. A real death for our sins. His death on the cross was not a figurative one but a real physical death. The moment that he lived in, it was the moment of the Roman rulers. And the Romans had perfected the art of crucifixion. They had to ensure that he died. So this Death was real and physical. In the same way, you spiritually died with him. It was real. It happened in the spiritual realm. And that is important because that brings the radical break of your past from your present. The fourth reality is that we are not only we not only were baptized in him in his death but we are also buried with him. Look at what verse 4 says. He says, therefore, what is he trying to say? Having died, therefore, so it didn't end at the cross. No, it went all the way. So, therefore, having died with him, the scripture adds that we were buried with him through baptism into death. So this baptism unto death went further to the burial process. So why does he stress the burial of Jesus Christ? What is the significance? You see, the fact that he was placed in a tomb is evidence that he actually died. So he did not swoon into a state of unconsciousness. He, he did not just simply fall asleep. He, he did not faint or get into a coma. No, because if that had happened, then what happened on the third day would have been a resuscitation. But that's not what happened. He died. He was buried. And the burial documents the fact that he actually died on the cross. And having died, then that means the resurrection is a reality. So, 
When we believe in Jesus Christ, what happens? We experience a real death in the spiritual realm. Let me say it again. When we believe in Jesus Christ, we experience death in the spiritual realm. Let me repeat it the third time. When we believe in Jesus Christ, we experience death in the spiritual realm. Realm. It is not a physical death. It is a spiritual death. Why? Because God takes us back. We, we, now in Christ Jesus, we die with him and we were buried with him. So spiritually speaking, we go back to where it happened and we are baptized into what happened. So this proves several things. One, that the old life that you had did not only die, but it was buried with him. So what you have now is the resurrected life. The life of God. It is not what you had then. What you had then was buried. What you had then died. And you will never see it again. You have been buried with him in baptism. baptism. That's what Paul asserts in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 12. And that is what is demonstrated when we get baptized in water. And that is why baptism with water ought to be by immersion. Because that is what pictures what has happened in the spirit realm. Because when you are dipped in the water, it is an indication that you died and now were buried with him. And coming out of the water speaks to the resurrection into a new life. Which brings us to our next reality, which is reality number five. And this we find in verse four and five. The scriptures tell us that therefore, who are buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. And verse 5 adds, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. So our union with Christ in his death and burial does not end there. It goes further to the resurrection. So the Bible says, it says, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father or by the glory of the Father so to we might walk in the newness of life. So look at what is happening. So the glorious power 
that raised Jesus from the dead and broke the shackles of death. That power that belongs to the Father, the power of the omnipotent one, is the same power that was at work in you on the day of your conversion, on the day of your regeneration, that cut across and split and separated you from who you were before and raised you up to a newness of life. So his death and resurrection is the perfect image of what happens to you when you surrender your life to Jesus Christ and believe into his death and resurrection. That is why it is important for our salvation. With a heart we believe that what? That he died and he rose from the dead. And we make confession with our mouth the Lord Jesus. And when we do that, we are saved. What is it that we are believing? We are believing that the same power of the Father that raised him from the dead, that same power in the moment that we believe separates us from our past and raises us who died and have been buried with him to a newness of life. Paul uses two words. He says, we too. We too. Now, we means everyone that believes in Jesus Christ. So, two means that we experience the same spiritual resurrection. We experience that regeneration. So it is not that your old life is resurrected to a better state. No, 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 no. It means you now have a totally new life that has been resurrected. So it is this resurrected life that empowers you to walk in the newness of life. So walking means a daily conduct of life. So you are supernaturally enabled now to walk on this narrow way that leads to life everlasting. Let's explore that word newness of life. Newness of life. Newness is a Greek word. And the Greek word is kainotes. Kainotes describes a state of existence that is different from what it was before. When we talk about kinotes, we are talking about a new state of existence, not a refurbished state of existence. And this has to be of a different kind. So what that brings to our understanding is that the old man 
the old new has not been resuscitated. The old new has been done away with. So what you have now, it is the actual life of Jesus Christ. The Zoe kind of life that is being lived in you. That is what you are experiencing now. And this kind of life ought to be revealed in our daily walk. In the direction that we take in life and in our conduct and our speech. Why? Because now you're living under a new master. You are embarking on a new walk in a new direction and with God himself by his spirit in you now directing your life from within. So that's why he goes on to say in verse 5 and says, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. And this if is the word that could be substituted with since. What, what is he trying to say? He's trying to say two things. Number one, that the death is an established fact. And that means the resurrection is an established reality. So you have been baptized into Christ's death. And that baptism does not end there. That identity does not end at death. It goes further to burial and it goes further to his resurrection. So you have been spiritually raised from the grave. Up from the grave. Like he arose up from the grave. You have been raised up from the grave with a newness of life. Life, to walk into this life that men may ask what happened to you? You are not the old you that we we knew. Why? Because you died. You were buried. And you have risen. The, what you have is a new life. Now somebody asked me a question. Say, Pastor, then does that mean we no longer struggle with sin? And we still wrestle with the enticing lures of temptation. We still fight and resist the advances of the devil. We are still embroiled in spiritual warfare. We still have to discipline our bodies for the purposes of godliness. There is still that ongoing battle. And we will see it in chapter 7. As a matter of fact, these struggles, these battles is one of the clear evidences 
that we are in Christ Jesus. That is the evidence that you were saved. That is the evidence that you have been regenerated. Because previously you were not fighting against sin. Previously you were dead. It is like a dead fish cannot fight against the current of the stream. A dead fish floats downstream. It, it follows the currents But a living fish moves upstream. The life that you now have causes you to move upstream against the current of sea. It, you now oppose the old system. Because you no longer as a slave to your old master. The new you has now come. And that is important for you to understand. What is the next one? Number six is that you were crucified with Jesus Christ. The Bible says knowing this that our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin may be done away with and we should no longer be slaves of sin. This is very important for us when they talk about our old man being crucified they're not talking about your father <laughs> because many of us called our parents old man so what he's trying to say here is that your old self your old self he, you know he has previously said you are baptized into his death in verse 3 in verse 5 he says you are united with him in the likeness of his death now he brings it home for you to understand what happens he was you were crucified so he's trying to say, say knowing this and the Greek word knowing is the Greek word ginosko ginosko means experiential knowledge so basically he wants you to get this truth and we shall expound on this next week. He says, this is something you know by experience. That you were crucified with him. And that is a wonderful reality. So what have we seen? today. Number one, that you died with him. That you were buried with him. That you were resurrected with him. And this points to this fact that you were crucified him. Now, if you are watching us, listening to us, you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. This is the grand opportunity that you have to surrender your life to him. And this is what will happen. In that moment, God will by his grace katonda muchisachi transport you to what happened to Christ agenda kuzaya kutwalerie chaba ku Christo baptize you 
into his death. His burial and his resurrection. And you will now rise to a newness of life. Not the old because the old has died. Your old man is crucified at that moment. And now the resurrected you with the life of God begins this walk that demonstrates the newness of life. And this is what happens to you when you ask the Lord Jesus to become the Savior and the Lord of your life. Let's pray this prayer from the bottom of your heart. Surrender your life. Allow you to die with him. To be buried with him. And to raise with him to a of life. Say, God of heaven, you are the creator of all mankind. And today I understand that there are only two kinds of people. Those after Adam, and those after Jesus Christ. I have been born after Adam. I wish to be born again after Jesus Christ. I am a sinner. I need a savior in my life. I believe that Jesus is the savior of mankind. He came and was born and died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he died for my sins. And Lord, I desire to die to my sins. Therefore, Jesus, yes, I invite you in my life as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died and rose again. And by your Spirit, I receive that regeneration of life now. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving my sins. Thank you, Lord, for this new life that I have. Lord, by your Spirit, help me to walk in this newness of life for your glory, honor, and fame. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you say that prayer, you have been wonderfully saved. Now the next steps, there is this, that number on the screen. Please call. Tell us what God has done in your life. And we will celebrate with you but also provide you with the basic instruction on the next steps in this wonderful journey. For you, the believer in Jesus Christ, I believe this has been an exciting session. You died with him, was buried with him, resurrected with him, now the life that you have is the life of God that the world needs to see. For creation is anxiously waiting. There is anxious desiring of the manifestation of the true sons of God. And that child of God is who you are. Therefore, spread your wings and reveal the newness of life. God, rich and bless you. So from Dominion Church, it's been a pleasure having you today. We look forward to hearing from you. We look forward to seeing you and connecting with you.
and this wonderful journey. So till we meet again, we say shalom from Dominion Church International. God richly bless you.